Hello and welcome back to part 8 of this game making tutorial series and we'll be continuing on the entities module which we started on last time and first of all need to to edit something that we did silliness last time if that's a word object path not object patch and we're gonna add a new function which is really simple so I'm just gonna copy paste it it's called ends.derive it's gonna derive the information from a a base base entity into a a specific entity. You will see how that works later. So it's just going to return the data from the from the file that we want to be a base entity, which we want to derive the entity from, and run it. Uh, we also need to be able to do the draw and the update function inside the specific entity. To do this we just use this function. This is specific for the update function. Each time this is run, which we're going to put inside main.lua main under the love.update function, and for each time that is called, it goes through every object in the ends.objects uh, table, which is going to be all our active entities, checks if it has a ends.update function, and runs it with the value dt as the default. We'll do the same thing with the draw function. Uh, by the way, you can download the code in the description under under the video. The entities uh, system is just advanced stuff, so we'll not be going into it right now. Maybe in a later tutorial. The same thing from the, for the draw functions and a couple of other functions which we're not gonna care about right now. Thus we need to load them into the main.love function. main.lua uh, uh, file. So ends update should be run at the bottom of the update function in main.lua. The reason why I put it on the bottom is because I want to do all the calculations before I do the calculations for entity entities. The same for the draw functions, it should always draw the entities on top of the background, thus putting it at the bottom of the function, the last function to be called. Now when we've done that, let's go ahead and make the base entity. It's going to be called, very originally, base.lua. whoop de doo So, start off by declaring local base is going to be a table. It's going to have the default x position of all the entities, y positions of all the entities, base.health is going to be 1 by default, function base.set position to x and y, base.x equals x, oh, x, base.y equals y, and function Base dot get position will return base x and base y. So this function will return the entity's position at a given moment. Return base. We also want to put the uh, since uh, you remember in the last tutorial that we said that it had to have a set position to be able to load the game the entity and a load function uh, a load function. So base load. We don't want to do anything here. That's going to be declared in the specific entity. But in case we forget to uh, to add a load function in our specific entity, it will just load nothing by running this function. And now when we're done with the basic entity, we'll go ahead and um, and make the specific entity, which is going to be a box, a falling box actually on the screen. That this is only for an example. We're later going to make advanced entities like a zeppelin and uh, some en some enemies. So, let's make the box entity. We want to base this entity on the base entity, which is called base. We don't need to put .lua afterwards, even though the file is named .lua, because in the derive function we already made it add .lua at the end of the entity name. 
so no problems. You only have to put the name of the file. Entity dot no semicolon load x in the y position. It's going to set the position of itself to the x and y position as we declared in the arguments of the load function and we want to be able to set a default size. We set the default size of the width to 64 and the height to 64 also. Then we want to be able to size the entity and get the size of the entity and I'm just gonna copy paste that because it's just the same as uh, set position and get position. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Then we want to set the update function, which is going to be called for every entity. You remember in the entity system. And in this entity, it's going to do this. It's going to add 32 pixels per second to the position of it, uh, to the Y position of the entity. Then function, we want it to draw itself. So, to draw itself, it needs to know where it, is, where it is on the screen. X, comma, Y equals self, get position. So, get the position of itself, which is going to be X and Y in this function, and width and height. So, get size. Then, we, um, I mean, uh, love those graphics, set color, we set the color of the box to black. And it's going to be visible and draw the rectangle which represents the box graphics rectangle fill uh, it's going to fill the whole box but not just a line around it X Y width and height now we have completed the box entity it's basically going to be a black box which falls 32 pixels per second we're later going to add physics to uh, to the entities, which is going to be awesome, but not in this part. This is only to show how the entity system works, basically. Then we want to spawn the box entity. To do this, we declare the name for the entity or the where the data for the entity is going to be stored, and that's going to be inside uh, the box entity. So ends create box at position 128 x and 128 y. We also we nearly forgot to register the entity. Remember in the last tutorial, if the entity is not registered, it's going not going to find the data to load into that uh, entity. So register. We're going to add the box uh, data into the register under the name box, of course. To load a file, we use the file love.filesystem.load function, which we have here. And the, pos the path to the entity is going to be through the entities folder, which we have uh, put in the object path value. And the name of the entity, which is box.lua. So there we go. Again, remember you can download the code from the description if you can't follow what I'm doing. So, we have regist registered the box data, not to run it. Notice that I did not put the, the brackets, the closed brackets at the end of this function. So it will not run, only load. So we can use it again and again and again. And I'll show you examples on how to do that. So, let's run the game. Cross our fingers and hope there's no glitches or bugs or errors. Oh, we have the error. Entities 27. Attempt to index local int. <laughs> oh, of course. Now I see. In the box here, we forgot to return the entity. So, at the very end of box.lua, put return entity. Now we're ready. Let's see what happens. Cross our fingers. Yes, the box is falling at 32 pixels per second. It's a lame box, but it's a box and it's an entity. Uh, now I'm going to show you what an entity helps us do what the entity system does for us. So we can code a very advanced piece of code for an, a, a, an enemy or a car, a vehicle, 
a player for that matter and just easily make another copy of it without having to copy paste the code and it's easier for the game it doesn't have to load so much and yeah it's just better so box n2 is going to be box the box entity but this time um, a little bit more to the right so that's the x position now we have two boxes very easily made no problem to make another box if we would have to do this outside uh, by not using the entities uh, uh, system we would use many 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 lines on just making two entities of the same type now we can easily make two entities of the same type like two boxes doing just the same they can think for themselves if they want to for example I can um, I can make the width of the other entity set size to 64 and 128 so the, you'll notice that they are independent there you go two boxes but one of them is a little higher than the other one using the same code but only a little tweaked very useful I'll show you um, more examples and more uh, advanced entities in the next part so see you then in part 9, please rate, comment and subscribe.